All right, hell yeah. So this is physics and we're using derivatives to uh, solve whether it's like a minimum or a maximum. So right here we got the NBA basketball player and we're just gonna say, hey, we're, we're shooting some angle and the question, 10 meters away. Now the question is, what's the minimum velocity uh, uh, and what's the angle for that? Like, you know, if I hardly want to throw the the minimal amount of juice into this ball, like what angle do I choose? You know what I mean? So uh, we've already done a separate video walking through here in a six minute process, but ultimately we get an equation. So if we threw in 40 degrees, you know what I mean? We get an equation for what the velocity initial is, and the answer was 10.7 meters per second. Using this equation, 10 divided by cosine 40, square root, um, you know, th th this 10 is the distance, you know what I mean? And, and then uh, cosine 40, that's the angle, uh, square root of the final height, 3.05, minus the initial height, minus uh, 10, which is that uh, x, uh, tangent 40, cool, divided by negative 4.9, that's gravity squared, that's kind of this term. And we get this equation by um, you know, getting the two position equations for y and x, and then when the basketball hits there at time final, that time is gonna be the same for both of those. And then so we solve for t for this easier one, jam it into here, and we've done that. And so now we're able to move on to the differential, and we just have it written right here. And so now we have an equation for velocity that's just a function of the angle. So with this setup, it says, hey, um, you know, if I give an angle, then it's going to say, hey, this is going to be the velocity. So now let's just talk through it. Let's say I just gave a, just a really, you know, horrible angle, just shot straight up in the air, basically an angle of 89 degrees. Like, wouldn't I need a ton of velocity? And why do I need a ton of velocity? Well, if I go totally straight up, the ball is going to come straight down. It ain't reaching the basket. A little slight angle, hey, it's going to go straight up, straight down. It might come to here. Um, so even with a slight angle, if it comes to here, all I would need to do, let, let's say it came to there, all I would need to do is just like a factor of 10 times my velocity to maybe get to the basket. So that is basically kind of showing you that with really steep angles, I need a ton of velocity. Now on the other end of the spectrum, um, why why isn't it that uh, wouldn't the wouldn't the wouldn't the best angle just be like a straight line? You know what I mean to the basket. And this is cool because uh, you know just even drawing that straight line is just like no because gravity is going to make this arc and you're just not going to get there. So if you actually start with a, a straight line towards the basket. Well, one, gravity is going to pull the ball down because it is going to take a certain amount of time to get there. And even think about it, even at light speed, you know what I mean, uh, that particle it has gravity working on it. It's still going to be below the rim, you know what I mean, but, but by just a, a fraction. So, uh, so th theoretically, you do need some angle. And even at zero, you know, with that light, you would need theoretically an infinite amount of velocity to get there in time. Like basically the ball would just have to like superposition itself right into the rim. And so so we do need some sort of uh, upward velocity to allow, um, you know, because gravity is, you know, slowing it down and then uh, changing its direction this way. So, uh, so, so that kind of proves that, that uh, we would need a ton of velocity right at uh, theta equals zero. And obviously we showed that we have a t we need a ton of velocity at theta equal like 89. And so, yeah. If that's the case, you know what I mean. It's kind of like the over under, um, and uh, and uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you're, you're, there's going to be an ideal, and so that's where we use derivatives. We say, and the derivative is kind of funky, you know. What I mean, we say, hey, what's the derivative of this equation? Well, we say it's going to be the derivative of vi. Um, with respect to theta, you know what I mean? This is the same thing if you have an equation of y, um, you do the derivative of y with respect to x, and your equation would be like y as a function of x is equal to like mx plus b, you know what I mean? And then so you would have the derivative of the function y of x um, in terms of dx. So even right here, this is a better way to describe it because the whole function goes in right there. And then you're changing dx by a little bit. Now this thing could just, you know, change everything into carrots if it makes it, 
easier. So now we're going to be like, hey, the change in the function y of x um, uh, divided by the change in x. You know what I mean? So, th th and, and for our function, it's going to be, hey, the change in velocity of initial divided by the change in the angle. And even this is kind of a complex thing to be like, well, what does this mean? All right, hell yeah. And so this is something that I kind of have to play around with myself. You know what I mean? And taking it to the extremes is the best place. Because uh, the, the easiest way for me to understand this is like, well, let's choose that angle of 90. Like, isn't that the extreme? It isn't, if we have an angle of 90, like the ball will never reach the basket. It'll go straight up and straight down always. So like, it, it just won't reach it. it theoretically, it would require an infinite amount of velocity to still not reach it. You know what I mean? So, hey, this goes to infinity and you still haven't reached it. So even, even if there was like the tiniest angle off of 90, like 89.999. All right, sorry about that. Okay, but we're, we're going somewhere with this. So, uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, let's just choose an angle of 89. You know what I mean? If we choose an angle of 89, maybe... Uh, at one degree, maybe our velocity is like 120 miles an hour, you know, what I mean 120 miles per hour cool uh, Now at an angle of 90 it was like an infinite amount of velocity So the difference between infinity and 120 miles an hour is, is like huge, right? Um, uh, even though infinity is kind of a, a placeholder for something un untangible Okay, so uh, then if you actually decrease the angle uh, by 88, um, you would see that uh, you would need less than 120 miles per hour to get there. Um, now, you know what I mean? And the, the, the first jump was from infinity to 120. This jump will be a, like 120 to like 110 miles per hour. So just keep that in mind. That, that, that what we're doing is we're changing theta by one degree and we're seeing that uh, the velocity went from uh, infinity minus 120. So that's our change in velocity. And then our next change in velocity for, for the next one degree is like 120 minus 110. So that number is like 10. And, and so this number will start to go down. So it's, it's at a high at the 90 and so we can do the same thing at zero degrees um, you know again we would need infinite amount of velocity at one degree well hell yeah you'd have to be going pretty damn fast you know what I mean so uh, you know uh, and, and then at two degrees you, you're you have to go less fast so e even even that shows that hey we're, we're still having the same change of one degree but we're having to go our change in velocity is less and so what we're showing is then there's going to be a point where if our change in velocity um, divided by like one degree at the low end and the high end are large numbers and when we change our velocity somewhere and then somewhere in between those on both ends of the spectrum we're getting smaller numbers well then there, there approaches a point where you're going to get uh, you're going to have no change between them. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, hey, if, if it's 100 degrees here, but then negative 20 here on Earth, you know what I mean? Hey, maybe there's a place that's 50 degrees. And then, you know, you, you, uh, or if you walk from, from the place that's 100 degrees to 120, you will have to walk through a place that's 50 degrees. You know what I mean? By definition. Um, so, uh... But yeah, um, oh, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure there's a way to even prove this where, where you could be like, well, uh, what, 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 what did I, um, you know, because if I, if I had an angle of, I, I, I really don't want to do this, but I'm sure one of these is a, a negative number and one's a positive number. And then when you, when you have a, a well, I guess we have to. Damn it, damn it. See, I'm not prepared for that. I hate negative numbers, I swear. Um, but anyway, so we're, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to go 0 degrees to 1. So our change in angle is 1 degree minus 0 degrees. Cool, we have that. Our change in velocity. What's our velocity at 1? Well, it's only like 120. But what's our velocity at 0? 
You know what I mean? We started at zero, we went to a degree of one. So we take the second minus the first. Well, now we're gonna minus infinity. So this one's negative hella. And then, so if we go to this over here to 90, you know what I mean? Hey, now we're gonna have our change in angle between, our change in angle is gonna be 90 minus 98. The change is gonna be the second minus the first. So we have uh, angle two minus angle one, and we have velocity uh, two minus velocity one. So just always keep that in mind, second minus the first. And this should be 89, apologize. And so we, so this becomes 90 minus 89. So we're still good on there. This is still a positive number. Just like going from zero to one was one minus zero. Going from 89 to 90 is still 90 minus 89. But now we have, uh, what happens at 90? We're gonna have infinity, an infinite amount of velocity needed minus 120. So now this is a hella positive number. Okay, so sweet. So that, that, that is very critical because now there has to be a point where the slope is zero. You just have a hella negative slope. And again, uh, or I guess for the first time, the derivative is like this. This is an equation for uh, the... Um, so at any given angle between zero and 90, this is the velocity needed. And, and I really should throw that into my calculator, but I, I do not want to make this video hella long and I already have the derivative into my calculator and I don't want to mess that up. Um, so uh, we're just, just keep, keep that in mind. If I throw in 90 right here, well, this thing is going to blow up. It's not, it's going to be undefined. But if I throw in 89, hell yeah, it's going to be hella fast. And so we'll do that, we'll do that at the very end because I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, and maybe let's just do it right now. So we're going to go 10 divided by... Uh, I just like to do this, 10 divided by cosine x, and then divided by, again, the, the um, we do have to do a parentheses here, we got a top and a bottom, 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent x, divided by negative 4.9. Okay, and I think we're, we're good to graph that. Okay, sweet, yeah, and it, it, it graphs perfect. So now we can go to a value of 40 degrees. You know what I mean? And uh, so what this said is a, at 40 degrees, we have our answer from the previous problem, 10.66, 10 10.67, 10 10.7. Um, and so now if we want to actually go to a value, and let, let's, let's, let's go to a, a value of, let's, get, let's say 10 degrees. You know what I mean? Um, so at a value of 10 degrees, we need 26 meters per second. Let's go uh, five degrees. And uh, that's gonna be even undefined at five degrees. So yeah, this problem says that you can't even get there even with a five degree angle. So we're gonna go six. And at a six degree angle, it's gonna take almost 700, uh, 700 meters per second to get there. So now the same thing with 89. An 89 degree angle, I'm surprised about this. An 89 degree angle will only take 50, 53 meters per second. So, uh, which is right around that 120 miles an hour. Damn, that was a pretty intelligent guess. And uh, so, and then theoretically, we need to slow down because sometimes people have a hard time just making sense of these. If, and I can make sense of this really easy. If I have an 89, if I have an 89 degree angle, the first thing to know is like, what's the cosine components of that? Um, it's going to be like 100% vertical, but you're going to have a small little titch like in the in in the x direction. That's going to be your velocity component, and uh, and I'm I'm just going to guess that it's one divided by 57. It's the inverse of 57. 57 inverse is 0 0.0715, and if we take cosine 89. Um, yeah, we, we get that. So just keep that in mind. And, and the way that I remember this is, let's say you have tangent. Tangent of your angle is sine theta divided by cosine theta. Well, this is the only one that's bizarre because it could be infinity or like negative infinity. You know what I mean? Cosine of theta could be zero. And if you have a zero in the denominator, that thing is going to go to infinity. But at the same time as that approaches zero, this might be a negative number. So it could approach negative infinity. Um... So, uh, so, so, so yeah, but like when are you going to measure an angle that's less than one degree? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe something does require that in, in physics, but for, for just all intensive purposes, 
if you have an angle, I mean, like, uh, sure, you can't throw an angle of zero into here. You could, but if you threw in zero for sine, this becomes zero and this becomes one. Zero divided by one is zero. But you can't throw in uh, an angle of 90 for cosine. Cosine of 90 is zero and you can't divide by zero. But you can at least throw in an angle of 89. So even tangent of 89 is 57. And so that's just a really good one to know. E even though you throw in an angle of 89 and this becomes... It should become hella small. Well, sure, it's just inverse of 57. You know what I mean? That that and so, so that's what I'm getting at. So e even though tangent goes from you know negative infinity to infinity, uh, just think of it going from uh, zero to 57. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, and uh, what was tangent? Uh, tangent 27. And, and and maybe maybe tangent can't be negative. I'm not sh I'm not too sure. My trigonometry skills aren't way up to par. All right, hell yeah. So we're almost done with this tangent, but it's really cool because we we said uh, we said if from that graph a value of 89, um, we we have a velocity of 53 meters per second, and x times two point. Uh, whoops. Um, value of uh, 89. Um, oh, so our y value. So uh, alpha y. Cool. So alpha y times 2.25. Yeah, it's 120 miles per hour. So this is really cool. And so the the other. So what I want to get at, holy Toledo, is that acceleration is change in velocity, change in time, and that's basically 10 meters per second per second, you know what I mean? Very similar to the 9.8. And in our case, it's gonna be negative. What that means is we have an upward velocity of 120. Every second, that's gonna get reduced by 10. You know what I mean? So right now, you just have a counting game. You have 120 and then minus 10. So it's gonna be 12 seconds, you know what I mean? 120, 110, 100, you know what I mean? 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 20, 10, and then zero. So that's gonna be 12 seconds for this thing to lose all its velocity. And by symmetry, it's going to take 12 seconds for it to come back to the same location. So now we have a value of time uh, for, for this 89 degrees, this scenario where we need 120 miles an hour, that we need 24 seconds. Well, if we're given 24 seconds, we still have, of this 53 meters per second, we still have a component 1 divided by 57. You know what I mean? So, so we only have 1 57th. Of, uh, of 53, but that's still like one meter per second. And you can see that we only need 10 seconds to get there. And, and we, we, we got a value of 20, 24. So let's, let's, see if that, let's see if that calculation works. So we're gonna go, uh, oh, in my bet, no, you can see my error. It's not 120. It's not 120 goes to 110. That's in miles per hour. Sometimes, uh, you know, people call me out on that. Don't don't switch units because you'll get confused. So we have 53 meters per second. That's what the graph shows. Okay, now we're going to reduce that 10 every second. So every second, this thing is going to go from it's going to reduce by 10 meters per second. We're going to go from 50 to 40 to 30. So let, let's count that out. We're going to go from 50 uh, to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10 to zero. So that that took five seconds to stop and then we need five seconds to, to so now we have time is equal to 10 seconds cool now we have 1 50th of 53 that's basically one meter per second in this cosine direction and we got 10 seconds to do that and guess what that's 10 meters so even just right there that, that, that's, that's probably gold for this video is just like whoa you're just playing around with the graph and trying to make sense of it and so uh, that was 89 um, so that was kind of, and like I said, how, how are you going to shoot an 89.9 degree angle, 89.5? You're just not. Like a one degree angle is still probably too small to even, you know what I mean, to, 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 to even quantify. Um, all right, so, so we, got our, we got our upper and lower bounds for that. And now we fully understand what the derivatives, kind of. You know, we have the, the high and the low, one's negative, one's positive, And there's going to be a sweet spot where when we change our angle, our velocity is not going to change. You know what I mean? So that, that, that is going to be the minimum. And sometimes it can be the maximum just depending, to, depending on, your, on your graph. And so like right here, here is the graph and you don't need derivatives. You know what I mean? Here is the equation for velocity as a function of angle. 
and uh, it, it has a minimum. So what you're looking at is where where it's the minimum, the slope is zero. I shouldn't have done that. Um, and then everywhere else it's steep as, and you can see from uh, with an angle with an angle of zero, hey, our slope is downward real steep. And then with a slope of you know near 90, our uh, slope is positive real steep. All right, so we're back and we're talking about the slope of uh, you know what I mean. So, uh, and in general, the derivative of this is going to be an equation for the slope of this line at every given angle. You know what I mean? And, but mainly, if we're just asking the one question, like uh, what's, what's the angle that maximizes, we've already said, like, uh, you know, or minimizes. We're looking for the angle that minimizes velocity. And so, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is you don't need to do the derivative. We're going to do the derivative of this equation, uh, of this equation, and when you do, you'll get an equation of the slope at every point, you know, given that input of theta. But we, for this problem, we just want the minimum. So, you know, using a calculator, I can get around 45, and then using a calculator, I have a minimum function. So I can go left of the minimum and then right of the minimum. Oh, bummer. Um, so we're going to go left of the minimum and then right of that minimum and then uh, kind of guess. Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, we're on this function. Okay, there we go. Left of the minimum, uh, right of the minimum. I was, just wasn't on the right graph. Okay, heck yeah. And so for our problem, we're going to get an angle of 47... 0.997 degrees. So basically 48 degrees. Um, uh, that is going to be the angle that that is associated with the lowest velocity. And that velocity at that angle is going to be 10.4 meters per second. So there you go. Uh, at 40 degrees, we're at 10.7. And at 48 degrees, this is the lowest velocity that we can um, throw the basketball, still make the shot, and we do have to have an angle of 48 degrees. Okay, so now we are going to go through the process of actually finding the differential equation. Alright, so uh, let me grab a new sheet of paper. Alright, heck yeah. So we have our equation, and essentially we want to take the derivative of that. And so uh, I, I really enjoy this book. This is Eschbach and its Handbook of Engineering Fundamentals. And it's just got such a, a great page for um, uh, differential equations. And so, and I was just shocked because they don't give you all of them. You know what I mean? You can get the differential of tangent, you know what I mean? Cool. Uh, obviously, you're going to get that. Um, but you, you don't need to. We're, we're, we're going to show because we even have a tangent in here. Like, all you need to know is... Uh, and then, and then, so here we're, we're going to write them out because the ones that we're going to use today. Um, so, so, so uh, you know, you probably heard the the first times the derivative of the second. So, if you have a derivative of u v, uh, you know, kind of a common one, this is going to be the first times the derivative of the second uh, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Sure, I think we've all memorized that one. But one we haven't memorized, and now I got it memorized, and it's such a useful one, is this. If we have uh, the derivative of u divided by v, um, and then dx. So that's what we have. We have something on the top and then something on the bottom, where this is going to be the second times the derivative of the first minus the first times the derivative of the second and then all divided by the second squared. You know I mean? So that this is the form that we're going to have to use. So then when we go do this, we're going to be like, well, what is the second? Well, that, that's, that's this whole thing. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of a constant, that's zero. Okay, cool. So this term's real easy. This term just becomes zero. Um, you know what I mean? Our life isn't so easy because, uh, because of this term right here. Because now we have... Uh, this, the, the u, the first, times the derivative of the second. So we have, uh, so we're going to have negative 10, and then we need to figure out what the derivative of this is. Well, well shoot, 
because this downstairs is two different things that are that are a product of each other. So we, we have to use this. This is U, this is V. So then if we go there, um, so th that's kind of the game we're playing. So right now we're, we're still, I mean, this, this will give us the derivative, but we have to just find every little piece of it. So right now we're on this. We're trying to take the derivative of this downstairs. Once we get that, we can throw it in. And that's going to be the massive part. But then, then divide by v squared, well, well that, that's just cosine squared and then get rid of the square root. And so that we're going to put all that underneath. Okay, so there's, I guess there's a few ways to like not get overwhelmed uh, by this, but I, I kind of just, I've been working on these, so I just kind of go for it. So now, uh, again, we're going to take the derivative of this downstairs, which is a product, so it looks like u and v. Our, our cosine is u. So now we're, so for this, we're going to have, uh, this is cosine theta. And then what was the derivative of this, though? Well, now this has the form of u to the one-half. And then so uh, one of the equations in the book says d dx is, is uh, of u to the n, uh, is equal to n u to the n minus 1 du dx. And so, uh, well, cool, we have that form. This is our u inside. And guess what? We're going to have to take the derivative of that. But the first part's pretty easy. You know what I mean? So, so right now we, are, we got cosine. We're going to take the derivative of this. So uh, that's just this form. So we bring down that 1 half. We, we go, and then we take all this stuff, 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent theta divided by negative 4.9, and then we're going to take that to the 1 half minus 1. So that's, that's just uh, to the negative 1 half. Cool. So uh, then what? So we got that part done, but now we need to take the derivative of the inside. Okay, so inside you have like a bunch of, you have that's a constant, that's a constant, and then this is... Um, uh, a tangent, you know what I mean? And so uh, when we take the derivative of those, those are going to be zero. But now we have the derivative of negative 10 tangent theta divided by negative 4.5. Well, the constant pops out of the, um, um, you know what I mean? Because we, we can take 10 divided by 4.9, you know, the, the, the minuses get rid. And then we're going to take the derivative of tangent theta uh, dx. Well, th this is the same thing as 10 divided by 4.9 derivative of sine theta divided by cosine theta. Okay, heck yeah. And guess what? Now, now we have a uv. So we're going to do that same process just for, just on that one. And but th this one's going to be way simpler. So we're going to go duv uh, dx uh, of this, and, and then we're going to say that's going to be the second times the derivative of the first minus the first times the derivative of the second divided by the second squared. Okay, so uh, we're going to take the second, that's going to be cosine theta, times the derivative of the first. So this is the equation for sine. It looks like that. So the slope is 1, and get what, 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 has, in a, what has, when you throw in 0, has 1? Well, that's cosine. And so, uh, so cool. So the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. So we get another cosine. So now we're going to minus. Um, we have a sine theta. But now we have to take the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine, well, it's a slope of 0. So if we throw in 0 for sine, that's 0. Cool. But we have a downward slope, so it's negative sine. All right, heck yeah. And then we have to divide by the second term squared, cosine squared. And then we should know that cosine squared, this, this becomes positive, and we have cosine squared plus sine squared. Well, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this is just 1 divided by cosine squared. And that's how I'm going to leave it. Some people r write it as um, secant squared theta. But I, I like it 1 divided by cosine because no one knows what the hell secant is. All right. So cool. So that was for that. And what was, what was that all about? Well, that was the du dx of that term. So now, right here, we're going to have a 1 divided by cosine squared theta. So after all that, we just got that term. But not, now we're cooking because I think we're done with the inside. Well, isn't that what we said? Is that we had, uh, hey, we have, uh, nah, 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 nah. 
uh, we, we said we had this. Th this was the downstairs, and this was the second term, the derivative of this product. So we had to go to here and be the first times the derivative of the second. So this thing, so now I'm just going to circle it and then draw a line. So I find this useful. So that is that term. So now we go to the next term, which is saying, all right, holy, to where are we at? So uh, this this next term says uh, we have the set. So what are we doing? We're, we're taking the derivative, we're taking the uv. So we're, we're just doing the downstairs part. And, and if we work back, why are we doing the downstairs part? Because we're trying to take the derivative of the whole downstairs part, which, which was this uh, original. The, this 10 divided by the downstairs part. Well, guess what? That's, that's the derivative of the downstairs part. And then we see that it's a uv, so that's what we're doing. We got the first part, now we're moving on to the second part. So that's going to be uh, v is just this, so I'm going to circle that. That's v. But now what's du dx? Well, that's the derivative of the first part. So if we have cosine, derivative of that is... Uh, because if this is the graph of cosine, the slope at zero angle is 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 uh, um, is zero. So what equation when you throw in zero gives you zero? That's sine. But it, this is a negative slope, so it's negative sine theta. So we got negative sine theta for that one. All right. Now we're done with this. So now this term is uh, I'll, I'll just go right over here and then circle all this stuff. You know what I mean? And hopefully that doesn't get too confusing. And then we're going to divide by this v squared. And, and, and that's obvious. So now we're done. So we can say dv initial d theta is going to be... So we have to start with this. We have to do that. that oh, this is 0. So we get, we get to start with this. We got negative 10. And uh, the derivative of the second, that's, that starts with this cosine. So we're going to go cosine theta um, times the der derivative of the second. So that's, that's this stuff. So we have uh, 1 half, and then we have 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent theta divided by negative 4.9. This is to the negative 1 half. We also have to multiply um, uh, yep, and then that inside part, the du dx was that one divided by cosine squared theta. Okay, but we're done with that. Now we have to add uh, the second part, uh, which is just that. So we we get to do this: three point zero five minus two minus ten tangent theta divided by negative 4.9. So we have the square root of that. And then we're going to multiply it by um, negative sine theta. Negative sine theta. Okay, and uh, where are we at? You know, we, we're, we're done with that top part now. And this top part was, uh, uh, this dv dt was all of this. So now we have to... Um, because we started with the cosine, so we have to close brackets on this. So this negative 10 is outside. See, this negative 10 was right there, and then that, that was the monster. That, that was the derivative uh, of uh, this whole thing. Okay, so we're done with that part. Now we just divide by v squared. So that's going to be cosine squared theta, and, and then just get rid of the square root on that. So 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent theta divided by negative 4.9. And there it is, you know what I mean? Now, a lot of, lot of places for error. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type this into the calculator because I'll probably mess it up. Because the cool thing is that this blue graph is messed up. This red graph is right. So we're, we're going to graph it and then we can... Uh, you know, go to the value of 48, and uh, or what? What is this? What does this red graph say? So we're going to trace it out. Oh, maybe this red graph is wrong. Oh, this is a bummer, because uh, I, I thought I thought I was done making errors. But if we go back to our zero value on this original equation, 
we, we get a, a left bound and a right bound and then uh, a guess oh bummer it's not liking that okay so, oh whoa, 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 whoa. We, we need the minimum so we got the minimum left bound right bound guess yeah and we get that 48 degrees with that 10.4 so what this says is once we take the derivative the equation for the derivative should go through the zero um, should, should go through the zero right here at 48 degrees and uh, but it doesn't so n none of these n th these two equations that I typed in both of them weren't weren't good so what we're gonna do is just try it again because there's it's so difficult to type these in without making errors um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, I'm going to do everything in this parentheses first and then so that that's what that's what I decided to do earlier so I that's what this red graph supposed to be that's what it was supposed to be um, but we'll, we'll try that again because then once I get the end parentheses then we're going to multiply then, then it doesn't matter once we get this end parentheses then we can multiply by this negative 10 we can multiply by 1 divided by cosine squared theta and we can multiply by 1 divided by this which is just inverted Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do this square root first. So we're going to square root 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent x. And uh, parentheses. Now we're going to divide it by negative 4.9. And we're done with that one. Now I'm going to go negative sine x. Cool. All right, so we're done with that. Now I'm going to add it to... Uh, I just got to make sure I have that uh, initial, yeah, we have that initial parentheses at the beginning. No extra so far. And now I'm going to add it to, hey, how about 1 divided by cosine x squared. And then let's do this one. Um, 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent x. Um, another parentheses divided by, yep, negative 4.9, finish the parentheses to the negative 0.5 power. All right, heck yeah. And now we're going to do 0.5. Now we're going to do cosine x. Okay, so we're done with that. that. That was brutal. And then just one more parentheses. And so we should be good. Now we can go negative 10. And now we can go 1 divided by cosine x squared. And now we can just invert this. That's the same thing as dividing by it. So we're going to go negative 4.9 divided by parentheses 3.05 minus 2 minus 10 tangent x. And uh, that should do it. Oh, maybe one more parentheses. So we have a parentheses there. And then, uh, yeah, one more parentheses. And I think we're good. So we're going to graph that and see if... Uh, Uh, it goes through the x-axis, but even worse. You know what I mean? It should be going through the x-axis, because um, what what this would say is that the this would be an equation for the slope. So it's not matching, and so I'll, I'll have to go back and see what errors I made. So let me let me do that in my spare time. All right, hell yeah. So we're back, and what we did is we used Wolfram Alpha. And then we're just able to type in our original equation. So that's what we do. And, uh, and then just hit enter. You know, it has all the symbols. It has the, the derivative symbol. And it, it, it's, real, it's pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? But what you can get is you can get an equation. So heck yeah, this is an official equation. So in my calculator, 1 divided by... Um, uh, I call this 1 divided by co cosine. That's secant. And then so... Uh, Let's see where we inserted this. Um, probably right here. So 1 divided by cosine, then tangent, and then 221.359. You know what I mean? We, we do this whole thing, and uh, it just gives you a check on reality because then that blue line graphs. <clears throat> and then uh, I actually have overlapping lines because I just wanted to make sure. <clears throat> I found all my errors in the other line. So this red one, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I... I started over here and then added this and then multiplied this 
and then we uh, we add uh, um, uh, let's see yeah 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 we multiply this and then we multiply this to the negative one half then we multiply one half cosine x and then we multiply by ten and then we divide it by the cosine squared and then divided by this so uh, so that one checks out but uh, it's just kind of interesting how you know what I mean if you have an error here how the hell are you going to be able to find it um, you know what I mean and one way to test if you have an error is uh, in your in your calculator you know what I mean you you can you can get the derivative well the fir the first check is uh, right where this minimum is so we'll go up to our original graph go left bound right bound and then minimum and so we have a minimum at x is equal to 0.8377 you know what I mean and so uh, are, are we in are we in so we're, we're in radians for this um, but uh, and then you just make sure your zeros for your other graphs uh, where your minimum is has to be where your zero is so that that's the first check so we got 0.8377 and then the second te chest test is you have a, you have a slope um, so you have a dy dx function so we can go over here to maybe like you know 0.5 radian so about 30 degrees hit enter and we have a slope of negative 10 and then so when we go down to our graph heck yeah we got negative 10 negative 10.44 so that's going to be a check on reality there but just a really useful tool because it's going to be you're going to make less errors typing in your original uh, uh, um, equation into wolfram alpha now uh i even made an error here where i made one of these like k sensitive I, I did capital x and this was lowercase x and this was capital x and that that didn't work so whatever so this this is case sensitive you use lowercase i would use lowercase throughout and just make sure everything's lowercase and uh, so here wolfram alpha also gives you a bunch of other equations you know what i mean for the same thing so uh so here's another one and uh i i don't know if i have have them typed in no, I, I just chose that one. But you do have other ones for a check on reality, especially if you're typing in this and you're not getting it. So at the end of the day, um, it's kind of cool to show you the whole process of taking a derivative and then getting kind of a massive equation. Um, but to actually type it into your calculator, that's where I find is, is the hardest part. I've never done one this size gotten through and then the first time it just came out perfect you know what I mean so it's just interesting to see where you're going to do errors and then and then when you find your errors you know it's usually sign change you know it's usually you know what I mean signs or, or then parentheses you know what I mean because if this is if this is two things that are added well you definitely have to have a parentheses around those before you multiply by negative 10 and divide by this um, and then the other aspect is like who cares you know what I mean because you already had you already had this uh, original graph, and you could already find the minimum. And if that's all you wanted, it's going to be really easy with a graphing calculator to find the minimum. Like, why do you need the equation for the derivative? So actually, that's a question for me and maybe for the audience. Like, why do you? Why is the equation for the derivative useful? Like the whole thing, you know what I mean? It, it seems like it's just useful for the mins and maxes. You know, I'll be thinking about that. Just, just proposing the question is a good place to start of like well if, if it's you know i just find it fun to find the derivative so this is a derivative of velocity initial with respect to theta and we did it um now i, I think it would be very challenging to set this equal to zero because once we set this equal to zero that's what we, we we do down here we come to the zero mark and then find our angle and uh and before we end the video, I might as well just go to degrees and then graph it in, in degrees, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right, hell yeah. So this graphed out, and uh, we'll just uh, find the minimum of our original equation, left bound, right bound. And I think it was like 48 degrees, 47.99. Cool. And, uh, and now we're going to go down to our zero. Uh, we're going to go left bound, right bound of these equations. And we get uh, the same answer, 47. So yeah, yeah. So the angle max to maximize that shot is 47.997046. And uh, let let's see, because uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and if we wanted to change these parameters, then, uh, you know, because I mean, I'm, I'm kind of curious uh, if you were, you know, what's the maximum angle for, for any, uh, what's the minimum velocity to go a distance when uh, your heights are the same? So if this was two meters, you know what I mean? So th th that's a separate equation. And, and this video is long enough that we might as well, we might as well solve that. You know what I mean? So uh, this would just be 2, and this would be 2. So then it would be 2 minus 2. So then we would just have the square root of, uh, well, then it would just be tan tangent x divided by, neg uh, divided by 4.9, you know, because the negatives would cancel. And then we would have cosine theta, and then we would have uh, 10 meters. So... If we were, and I guess this problem is basically saying if, if we're 3.05 meters tall um, uh, or, you know, standing on something that, that we're even with the basket, uh, what's our max angle? So I'm going to clear out all these. And then uh, we'll, we'll just type this equation in. So 10 divided by cosine x divided by the square root of 10 tangent x divided by 4.9. And uh, cool, we're going to graph that. So we'll come in and get our minimum, left bound, right bound, and our guess. Cool, so, so we have 45 degrees. You know what I mean? And, and, and no duh. You know what I mean? So the, the, the angle to maximize your distance is also the same angle to have the lowest uh, input velocity. So if, if I only have a certain amount of velocity initial uh, and I want to go the farthest, it's going to be 45 degrees. Uh, you know what I mean? So, so I guess there's two ways to, to say that. Um, so when we say, what was the... What was, what's the angle to go the farthest distance? Well, I think we all know that's 45 degrees. It's just interesting when, when you say it like, hey, what if I only have so much velocity? I can only put so much velocity into my shot. What angle should I use to, to go the farthest distance? And it's 45. So, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and no duh. But, but that, that, that does it. So this is our velocity initial for that. Uh, but in this equation, you can change any of the parameters and then figure out well, what's your max velocity. So I'm just on a kick of like, oh, this is cool to uh, have problems, especially with sines and cosines. You know, obviously, uh, you know, how we started this problem is uh, if, you're, if your angle is totally straight up, it's never getting to the basket. If, you're, if your shot is at the horizontal, well, in this case, it's just never getting to the basket. You're already lower. You know what I mean? So you have to have some sort of minimum angle to even make it feasib uh, feasibly possible to get to the basket on center. And so that's going to be your minimum angle there. And obviously, anything slight uh, this way of 90 degrees is your, minim is your maximum angle. So between that range... Uh, you know what I mean? And your velocity has to be hella fast to get there or really fast, hella fast to actually drop in. Um, and then somewhere in between is that sweet spot where you, you hardly have to use any velocity or better said, you have to use the lowest amount of velocity input uh, with an angle to actually reach that basket. Okay, so hell yeah. So that, that I'm going to do more of these problems just because I'm so fascinated. Like what equations have this? Where if you throw in a huge value... Uh, theta is equal to infinity, you know what I mean, and theta is equal to negative infinity, uh, you get, you get, uh, um, uh, you, you know, basically two, two, two similar values. So in this case, our velocity would have to be hella and hella, and then anywhere in between, we would have a lower number. So hell yeah, there is going to be a, a minimum in this case. If, if we're hella on that side, hella on that side, our equation's got to look like that, and then you have that minimum. So just even like that, just being able to uh, a analyze a problem and, and see if it is like a minimum or, or if, it's, if it's more like, whoa, the extremes are really low amounts, and then we're trying to find that maximum. Um, well, cool. Well, I'll, I'll keep doing more of these, and I just think the take-home point is it's just fascinating to me that you can have such a complex equation but you just use 
these uh, these structures. And the one that doesn't get taught that I've never even heard of was the derivative of u divided by v. That, that's a game changer. You know, I mean, if you're going to learn the product rule for derivatives, uh, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, but you don't learn this one, you know, the second times the derivative of the first minus the first times the derivative of the second all divided by the second squared. I mean, th th that's like learning multiplication, but then not learning division. You know, and then years later being like, oh, no duh, like multiple. So this was multiplication, but then you're saying, uh, you know, I mean, th there's another axiom for di division that we're just learning. So I think hands down, these should be learned at the very same time, because once you learn those two, sky's the limit. And in this one, this one comes out in the wash. I mean, this is the first derivative you learn, u to the n, bring the n down, and then n minus 1. Like, obviously. So that, that's what we used for this one. It was just those three derivatives, and it seems like those are the powerhouses. And especially memorizing this one. Even if you don't memorize it, just know to go into the book and look it up. Alright, so I think I'm done talking. Thanks for joining me on this one, and guess what? That's a video.